Welcome to IBC 2025. This year we bring together our global media, technology and entertainment clients showcasing their groundbreaking innovations right here in Amsterdam. IBC 2025 and I'm here with Charlie at the tie line stand. That's a mouthful, tie line. <laughs> Pretty straightforward today, Joe. We got there. Tie line, yeah, it's all good. Yeah, we got, we got there, which is good to see you. Good to see you. Tell us about tie line then, and where you sit in the market. Yeah, sure. Look, um, our specialisation is is audio compression, and giving rock solid audio from anywhere outside the studio, delivering it back. In addition to that, we're all big about interoperability with many standards, and so all of our um, studio-based codecs have AOIP compatibility with AS67, ST2110. NMOS 4, 5, and 7, um, Ravenna, Livewire Plus, and optionally with Dante and, and Witten and IP. Uh, in addition to that, our boxes support the EBU standards for SIP, which is the interoperability of our IP for contribution, and that's EBU 3326. And then for IFB and Intercom, it is 3347, um, IP3. So essentially, we can talk to any pieces of other uh, manufacturers. So we can integrate into Riedel intercom systems to Clearcom um, and because of that we also stream audio of the public internet so it enables us to okay, essentially connect islands of audio IP so you could have uh, a large say event where you've got multiple venues and they're all running with say AS67, but you want to get audio, could either be IFB or commentary audio, from there back to your, your central IBC. Um, we can do that with Ravenna, and we can take that into the box, and then we can convert it into enhanced Aptex or AAC or Opus, and enable that interconnectivity between all the sites. Wow, <laughs> that was an answer and a half. Sorry about that. A, a lot of information to unpack there, but I guess the, my first question is, what does it actually mean for the end user? What are the benefits? What are the features of all of this? Yeah. Well, look, ultimately it means that when they grab our piece of equipment, they drop it into their network, it just connects and it works. Uh, we're all big on the compliance to the standards rather than compatibility. Anyone's got compatible standards, Sometimes it can be a bit of a headache for, for people when they're doing the integration, whereas we've got compliance with the standards, which it just works uh, across the board with all those, those things. So for integration, it's, it's simplicity and it's flexibility. That's what you're looking for. And our boxes also have the traditional analog and digital inputs and outputs, but we've got the AOIP. So whilst there's studio infrastructure today, maybe analog or digital, it's all ready for tomorrow when they want to go to audio over IP. You're all about finding solutions, yeah, exactly. tailor-made yeah. solutions for your for your customers. And and how is the show going? What are you showcasing? How are people reacting? Well, look, um, this year what we're showcasing is essentially um, on our gateway product as, as well as um, our other products, which are called the Bridget 2 and the Bridget Extra 2. Um, we've done a lot of software enhancements in them, and so we added additional uh, functionality such as output audio processing, um, NMOS 7 which is for tallies and relays so they can trigger those and the other big thing is is all of our boxes support SIP and SIP trunking and so that's where I was saying before they can integrate into with intercom systems but then our other equipment just over here behind me is our commentary uh, codex which enables you to do commentary or outside broadcasts so we can do contribution as well not just purely um, intercom and IFB. Ah, okay. And how are people reacting, uh, you know, when they come to see how they're reacting to, to all of the new developments? Well, fundamentally, they're, they're really excited about it because they like the fact that we're constantly evolving the product. And sometimes with our product, it's not everything to everyone on day one, but over time, it progressively gets that way because through critical feedback from users, we implement new functionality and new features. Uh, and invariably, it's a, it's a firmware update, you know, so once they're invested into Tyline, they're invested in a, a good relationship of, of ongoing development and support. Talk to me about big trends, if you like, in the market at the moment. The biggest trend uh, that's impacting a lot of broadcasters, uh, particularly here in Europe and, and probably more so in, in the United Kingdom, 
is the impending shutdown of the ICN network. So traditionally, you know, intercom and contribution has all we've done over copper ICN lines. Yeah. Um, whereas now, uh, and we have been positioned for many, many years, enables broadcasters to do it over IP. So we're able to help them and assist them in that transition, where they can do the VoIP trunking, they can do SIP, they can do tie line session with all of our boxes and, and help them with that. My goodness, it's magic. <laughs> Talk to me then about the future. What does the future hold? If you had a crystal ball, what do the next five to 10 years look like for Tyline? Uh, look, it's it's all about product evolution. Um, you know I mean, it's, it's essentially keeping ahead with the standards and, and obviously doing our own stuff, which is a secret sauce. Yeah. So it's always a case of watch this space, you know? Yeah. So we're always, you know, Every six to 12 months, 18 months, you know I mean, there's either new functionality, new features, and in some cases, new hardware. So it's always good to, to keep abreast of Tyline, and yeah. you can do that by simply just visiting our website, which is tyline.com. There you go. You said it. Thank you so much. Thanks for your time, and enjoy the rest of the show. And you too. Have a great show, and thanks for your time.